Are you one of them who's constantly struggling to stay awake during class? Then this video is gonna be for you, my friend. If you're new to the channel, hello, I'm Naveen, I'm a second year medical student at CMC Bellore, and welcome back to the channel. So, being spent more than a year in a medical school, I really know how challenging it is to stay awake and attentive during class, since the classes will be more than four to five hours a day, and that can even go beyond that depending on the practical session. And of course, classes will be overwhelming considering the MBBS curriculum into account. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about six tips and tricks that you. You can actually utilize to tackle all those difficulties that you actually face to stay awake and attentive during a particular class given the fact that you have at least slept well that is about seven to eight hours a night before the particular class and considering all other ideal factors in mind and by the end of this video you will actually know what exactly to do to stay attentive during a particular class and few of the tips may also be familiar to you but just please don't skip the video because i'm also going to talk about the scientific research and evidence behind that which will help you in understanding how relevant and how useful is these tips and tricks in your particular lecture or class. So it all starts from the very beginning you actually enter the class. So try getting seated within the first half of your seat arrangement. Let's say for example your lecture hall has 50 rows of seats. So try possibly getting seated within at least the first 10 rows of seats. And why am I saying that is since you are sitting very close to the teacher and the board as well, you will be more obligated to listen and not fall asleep during class so you will be in a condition always thinking not to fall asleep since you're more closer to the teacher and of course that might help you as well so now you have been seated so the next tip that I'm gonna talk about is maintain a straight posture during your class don't use your hands to support your face or don't lean which might induce sleep so just maintain a straight posture that is again gonna benefit you a lot so if you actually think what this posture does in your efficiency of learning or listening I would like to quote this particular study that was published in the year of 2020 so this study is not going to be exactly relevant to the posture and the postural changes that you actually do in a class but in order to understand how posture also you know influences the brain activity and hence the efficiency of learning i would like to talk about this study this study is actually based on the brain activity during a working memory task in different postures that is in sitting standing and in the supine posture that is a lying down posture so this is done on the basis of eeg study that is where your brain activity will be measured in terms of electroencephalogram signals so for the purpose of the study 24 participants were recruited and they were given a two back task and they were allowed to perform it in different postural changes during which the brain activity was checked in terms of their EEG signals and there were substantial differences in the brain signals in different postures as well so finally on seeing the results it was concluded that brain efficiency is higher in sitting and standing posture than a supine posture that's a lying down posture so yeah maintain a straight posture and the next step is being engaged in the class so one thing you can do in order to be engaged in classes you can take notes or summaries of whatever which is being taught or if you are not a person who usually take notes what you can do is you can bring the respective subject textbook and you can highlight whatever is being taught or whatever is being emphasized that will make your learning more, more easier since you are actually knowing what's actually important and that will help you in reading big big gold standard textbooks as well and the next step is to practice deep breathing or something known as diaphragmatic breathing to put it more scientifically that is you'll have to contract your diaphragm which will help in deepening the inhalation and exhalation in, in more simpler words it's actually taking deep breaths so in order to understand the effect of these deep breaths in the efficiency of learning and listening I would like to quote this particular study which was published in the year of 2017 on the effect of this deep breathing or diaphragmatic breathing on attention negative effects and the stress in healthy adults so 40 participants were recruited for the purpose of the study and they were randomly assigned into two different groups so breathing intervention group a big group let's call and control group that's a CG group let's call so this big group that is breathing intervention group they actually received 20 deep breathing training sessions over the past eight weeks and the control group didn't receive any of such trainings and by the end of these eight weeks certain tests were conducted in order to know the sustained attention of these individuals and also salivary cortisol levels were actually you know measured along with that in order to know the stress levels of these participants and the results showed that there was an increase in the sustained attention for the participants belonging to the big group and there was 
also a decrease in the salivary cortisol levels which means that there was a decreased stress as well but in the control group there was no any significant change and it almost remains the same so whenever you feel bored or tired during your class just take certain deep breaths and that can help you as well so now let's move on to the next tip which is hydration so this particular tip is not going to exactly benefit you more when your hydration status is pretty good and normal but when you're dehydrated or your hydration status is poor this this can actually improve your attention and alertness in your class so as we all know water being a basic requirement of a human body and water accounts for more than 75 percentage of brain mass so which means there should be definitely an association between the cognitive performance and the state of hydration right so in order to know that there was a research that was done and that was published in 2019 which studied on the effect of dehydration and a rehydration following dehydration and effects of these two phenomenon on the cognitive performance performance and the generalized mood as well so for the purpose of this particular study 12 uh, participants were recruited and they underwent a 12 hours of overnight fast after which certain baseline tests were done like anthropometric measurements certain urine and blood biomarkers and something known as a VAS which will analog scales which was done in order to know the intensity of thirst of an individual and of course the profile of mood states in order to know the mood status and certain cognitive performance tests as well so once these baseline tests were conducted those participants were then subjected to a 36 hours of water deprivation period after which another test was repeated again and let's call that as a dehydration test so now after these 36 hours of dehydration a 1.5 liter of water supplementation were given to these participants and after that and another baseline test were done so now when the results of all these three tests were compared it actually showed that dehydration had negative effects on vigor short-term memory and attention and subsequent rehydration through water supplementation following a dehydration improvised the total mood disturbances and also improved the short-term memory and decreased reaction time hence increased alertness as well and also it elevated fatigue so yeah my friends better carry a bottle and hydrate yourself whenever possible so that you can be the best version of yourself when you actually listen or stay in a class and the other tips include doing some form of aerobic exercises in the early morning following which you can have a cold shower that can can increase your alertness and attentiveness just like a cup of coffee so that's it my friends if you found this video useful please consider subscribing because it means a lot to me and that's a point of appreciation for the all the time and effort that i've actually put in making this video also do click that like button and the bell icon so that you'll never miss any single video of mine and one thing that would be great if you guys do is follow and implement these tips and tricks in your lectures and classes and if you have personally benefited from it please comment down below whatever you think of these tips and tricks so that the positiveness and the benefits of these tips and tricks will be showcased to all of the people who are viewing my comments so let's stay awake and attentive during the class until then see you all in the next video